Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to learn about an important deep neural network called generative adversarial network. We will look into its architecture. Then we will understand how GAN works and different types of GAN. Finally, we will see a few applications of GAN. So first of all, let us understand what is GAN. GAN or generative adversarial networks were introduced in 2004. 14 by Ian Goodfellow and his team as an unsupervised machine learning approach for generative mob modeling. Here you can see a basic block diagram of GAN. It consists of two components that is the generator part and the discriminator part. Now let us understand the generator neural network. So a generator neural network takes a fixed length vector as the input and generates a fake sample that resembles the training data set. Here you can see this latent vector is given to this uh, generator ne network and it produces this fake sample or the generated image. This, this fixed length vector is drawn randomly from a Gaussian distribution and is used to seed the generative process. This fixed length vector or fixed length vector space is also refers to as latent space as it comprises the latent variables these latent variables consist of the compressed representation of the data distribution this data distribution has high level of concepts that can be seen in the data samples generated by the generator neural network so once the generator neural network is trained enough that it produces indistinguishable sample that, that that is these generated images are nearly same as the real images then we save it and use the generator for generating new data samples. Now we'll discuss the discriminator neural network. So the discriminator neural network is a simple classification model. It takes a real data sample from the training data set and a fake data sample generated by the generator neural network. Then predict a binary class label to classify the data samples into real or fake. So its work is to distinguish whether the given data sample is from is a fake or real. That's it. Now we'll see the training process or, or how GAN work. The training process of a GAN is not same as any other deep neural network. It's quite di different. In GAN, both the discriminator and generator are trained in an adversarial manner. So they both are in competition with each other. GAN tries, the generator tries to produce an image as real as possible and discriminator tries to uh, see, tries to distinguish whether it is real or fake image. So, uh, via adversarial training, the generator learns to create data that is similar to real data while the discriminator learns to distinguish between the real data and the generated data. Both the generator and the discriminator neural network are trained iteratively. While generator is trying to improve its ability to create data that can fool the discriminator. And the discriminator trying to improve its ability to distinguish between both real data and the generated data. Now let's see a few problem uh, with the GAN. So our first problem is mode collapse. So GAN usually produces a wide range of outputs for every random noise given to the generator. So in this mode collapse, the generator produces a li limited diversity of samples regardless of the random noise. In some case, the generator produces same output for, for every random noise. And this is one of the most common problems that occurred to me when I was working with GAN. Our next problem is non-convergence. The discriminator and generator model o o o o oscillates, destabilizes and sometimes never converges. So in this issue, it would take a whole lot of time to train, but you will never get to a point where you can stop the training and use the generator. Okay. And the third problem is vanishing gradient. So there should be a balance between both the power of discriminator and the generator neural ne ne network. If your discriminator is too powerful, then the generator fails to train due to the vanishing gradient problem. So in this third point, we should balance the number of parameter or the learning a, 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 a ability of both the generator and the discriminator so they can be equal to e each other as 
ट्रेनिंग इन गैन इज लाइक ए कॉम्पिटिशन बिटवीन टू प्लेयर सो वी नीड टू गिव इक्वल पावर टू बोथ द पार्टीज नाउ विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ द सिंपल टाइप्स ऑफ गैन विल इंप्लीमेंट इन फ्यूचर वीडियो सो फर्स्ट इज वेनीला गैन so it is a simple type of gan where both the generator and the discriminator neural network are built using the multi layer perceptron or feed forward neural network or you can say the dense layer next is deep convolution gan so in dc gan we use convolution layer which are more stable and generate high quality images so we can say uh, in dc gan we just use the concept of gan and use the convolution based normalization relu activation function and transpose convolution layer okay and it is much more stable and easy training easy to train as it uses convolution layer with shear weights so they are light in term of number of parameter as compared to vanilla gan and the third one is the conditional gan in conditional gan we uses class level as an extra information to generate samples based on a given condition so here we specifically provide a random noise as the initial input and also a class label so these two would be input and based on the given class label it would generate the samples so we can say in the conditional gan we have controlled the generation process somehow by giving it the extra information that is class label so in first two types of gan you need just images but in the third you need images and also their class labels so in third case that is conditional gan we cannot say it as a total unsupervised because we also need some kind of labels now few applications so the first application is data augmentation this is one of my favorite application because sometime when you work with deep neural network you are short of data and in that case you can use gan to train the gan and generate more synthetic data and usually that synthetic data you can use while training your neural network or you can use that data for semi supervised learning or self supervised learning second application is image denoising third super resolution here in this image you can see lower resolution image and then you can see 4x higher resolution image so you can see the improvement maybe you can search sr gan one of the application of gan next is text to image generation that can also be done with gan music generation that can also be so these are just few applications so there are whole lot of application we'll see in future videos so that's it for the video on generative adversarial network i hope you found it informative and helpful if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and please do subscribe the channel and share the video thank you have a nice day